And here to clarify and explain the situation, this is an exclusive. It, it, is, it is actually his first time on live television. He is the newly appointed president and chief executive officer of the Philippines Basis Conversion and Development Authority, or more known as BCDA. Mr. Vince Bison is with us this morning. Welcome to Hot Copy, Vince. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you very much, Karen, and thank you so much for all the to the viewers watching. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, and you know, I'm, it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm a little bit nervous. Yeah. It's my first time, but <laughs> all right. we'll, we'll try but to we'll, do our we'll best. We'll try and not make you nervous. Okay, the president comes home from uh, his first state visit to China, and uh, with a whopping figure of $24 billion, the largest figure ever mentioned uh, in, in history from any president coming from a state visit from any country. And this is a country where in the last six years, uh, the Philippines hasn't exactly had the best relationship with China. And now um, you have stories coming out that it seems to be that the $24 billion isn't what it seems. You have companies coming out saying it's blacklisted by the World Bank. Companies whose credibility is mentioned, companies who've been um, involved in anomalies or bid rigging. Is there anything to really worry about? Explain where we are exactly in this space. You know, Karen, you're absolutely right. This was a historic visit by the president, both to China and to Japan. Historic, not only because of the figure you mentioned, but historic because um, I think we have a president who went to China, who went to Japan, with only one thing in mind, mm -hmm. and that is the welfare of the people. And with that in mind, the president saw it fit to really see what other countries can do to help build our country and mm -hmm. move our country forward and uh, improve the people's welfare. Okay. Now, having said that, I think what is a little bit sad and disappointing is that as soon as the president came back, or even before he came back from, from Japan, stories from the media started coming out already, looking for holes, yung mga butas, mm. dun sa mga bagay na inuwi niya galing sa mga bansang. So, so it, it, I, the, the memorandum of understanding. Absolutely. Okay. Now, we are not saying that we are against criticism or we do not want criticism. We are open to criticism, but... I think for the media, it has to be within the bounds of responsibility no, and due diligence. Mm -hmm. no? For example, no, um, while the president was in Japan, there was a story that came out in the Inquirer that said country, uh, companies that were barred by the World Bank, that bagged, the word bagged is very important, yeah. bagged these contracts or these infrastructure projects were ba barred by the World Bank. Now, when you say bagged, that means nakuha na nung kumpanya ang kontrata. Mm. Diba? Nakuha na, nasa kanika na, sila na ang gagawa. Mm. That is absolutely false. Okay. Absolutely false. No? And I think Secretary Dominguez, Secretary Pernia, and the other cabinet secretaries have clearly pointed it out. What was signed in China were memoranda of understanding for feasibility studies. Okay. Pag-aaralan pa lang yung mga proyektong to, at no cost to the Philippine government. Okay. Yung mga kumpanyang refer ng Chinese government, mm -hmm. ang gagastos nito, wala pong babayaran ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas nito. So I think one point you're making is these companies that also are in a memorandum of understanding with the Philippine government are companies that the Chinese government had endorsed. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. You, in other words, no cabinet official seek them out. No. No cabinet official looked for these specific no. companies. None. No. They were not lobbied in any way. It was presented no. yes. by the Chinese government. They were referred to to government corporations such as BCDA. Okay. After the referral, they submitted their letters of intent. Okay. And by the way, they were the only ones who submitted letters of intent for these projects. Okay. No one else. However, I would be very happy to, to tell you right now that after the trip to China and the trip to Japan, we have already received other uh, feelers and expressions of intent from other companies, from Germany, mm. from Japan, from other, for, from other countries and other companies no. who have expressed interest for this. And we will entertain all of them. Okay. We will talk to all of them. We will, if they are willing to, to 
to do a feasibility study at their own cost, then we will okay. we will agree to that because right. that's what's that's the important thing because we need to understand that these feasibility studies are step one mm. for these projects mm. to come to reality. Okay, so clearly what Vince is saying is we are now only on step one. Absolutely. We're going to show you graphics that um, I think will be some, these are some of the graphics that will be presented in Malacanang today. So this is a first, you're seeing it on television, of exactly what kind of projects are we talking about. So let's show the first graphics right now. So this is the project time. Yeah. Uh, this is the timeline that you're expecting. Talk about that. You know, and okay. I think this clearly illustrates how the process of a big ticket infrastructure project like okay. the BRT from the Fort to Naia uh -oh. will go through, what kind okay. of process it goes through. So we're only on step one. We're only at step one right now. And by the way, just to, just to add to this, you know, this company that was questioned by uh, a reporter from the Inquirer, you know, the China Road and Bridge Company, I think the public also has to know that this same company was actually awarded a contract by the DPWH in the previous administration. Uh, I have the documents here, you know, the Central Luzon Link Expressway, mm -hmm. um, Rio Chico Bridge section. You no, know, it's a 4.9 billion project mm. and it says here the notice of proceed was given on April 12, 2016. Mm. Now this is the same company that the um, that the inquiry reporter said was barred from was barred by the World Bank. Yes. And till, yet, 20, till 2017. Yes, but this is 2016. Correct. What am I saying here? I think that and the secretary of, of DPWH at that time was Secretary Babe Simpson. I think a man with unquestionable and impeccable character. I don't think Secretary Simpson and the Pinoy administration, who um, was prob whose centerpiece was anti-corruption, would allow a company that was not qualified mm. to not only bid for a for a huge, a billion peso project, but actually win it. So mm -hmm. you see, and we yeah, are going to see. Uh, there's talk, nothing wrong. This Central Luzon Clearly, Link no. Expressway is yet to be built. Yes, it's yet to be built. Okay, but closed under Pinoy's time. Closed okay. under Pinoy's time. But I think DPWH, I'm sure Secretary Simpson did the due diligence on this, and they deemed this company qualified. But having said that, let's go back to the timeline. Okay, no? go let's ahead. Go back let's to go back timeline. to that uh, timeline. We are just at step one. Okay. Okay. In order for a project to become a reality, mm. we need to go through step one, okay. which is the feasibility uh -oh. study. And that's where we're at now. Let's go through this quickly because you have a lot of projects sure. to show. Okay, so step two, step two take a month. is after a feasibility study is done. What By the way, again, I have to emphasize. How long will that take? Six months? Maybe six months. Okay. Hopefully we can do it faster. And no? they will pay for well, the feasibility study? They will pay for it. There is no it. cost at all to the Filipino okay. taxpayer. Uh -oh. Then we go to step two, which is the... Um, financial negotiation, okay. which means basically that uh, the Philippine government and the Chinese government will discuss, okay, this project is deemed feasible, uh -oh. yeah. okay. so now let's talk about financing. How are we going to finance it? Yeah. Is it going to be a, a government to government loan? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be a grant? I is see. it going to be uh, offered for private mm -hmm. uh, public mm -hmm. partnership? Yeah. So those things have to go through the motions. Okay. You know? And then, then we move yeah. to step three, uh -oh. which is the, um, the terms of reference, if okay. I'm not mistaken. No. All right. Now, the terms of reference is different from the feasibility study because I can already predict what the media is going to say. They're going to say, doesn't the company that did the feasibility study already have undue advantage over other companies because that they're they the ones want that the did contract. it? Absolutely uh -oh. not because the feasibility study is not the terms of reference. The terms of reference will not be done by the company that did the feasibility study. The terms of reference will be done by the Philippine government. I see. So we're going to be the ones to do it. We're going to make sure, and we have very strict procurement laws, Karen. Okay, okay. And by the way, Moving the laws that will, that will apply, that will apply to, to any project will be Philippine law, not the laws of the Chinese government, okay. or the Japanese government, or the German government. All right, moving Sorry, on. Sorry, I think I skipped the, uh, no, no, the detailed engineering design. This, okay. The detailed engineering design is 
the essentially the detailed plan for the project. So mm -hmm. if you're going to build a road, you're going to build a bridge, it's like the architectural and the engineering plans. Okay. So that takes time. Actually, that's the longest. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes up to one year All right. or even more. Okay. After that, terms of reference, and then after that, we now move to the bidding. Mm. Uh, are they all going to be bidded out, Absolutely. or can the government get into a negotiated um, deal? You know, um, there are provisions for a negotiated deal, but I think of projects of this magnitude, it's best to go through a transparent and open competitive bidding. Okay. Next. So, we, so the yeah. government gets the best deal all right. out of everyone. Okay, right? next. Next. After the bidding, then it's awarded. Yeah. You know? And we promise you, you know, and I want to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to show you something at the end about a foreign, um, a freedom of information portal that we're going to launch. But, you know, um, past administrations have always talked about transparency, accountability. But the, main, the, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. The proof is freedom of information, and that's why media like yourself mm. has always pushed for freedom of information. In the past administration, freedom of information was their, one of their cornerstone platforms. They promised this during the campaign, yeah. right? But what happened? It was yeah. never passed, True. right? In the first month of the Duterte administration, even without any action from Congress, the president signed an executive order on freedom of information. That's unprecedented, yeah. Karen. And, and okay, explain how that will help all that the projects. Means, that means now um, any person, any citizen, um, media, not even, not even involved in the media, can just ask for relevant information such as these, these MOUs. Projects, yeah, these the MOUs. MOUs. That's why, you know, when the news broke out in the Inquirer, we got some emails. You know, we got an email from the son of um, Secretary Butch Abad. No? And he asked, uh, by the way, he also gave a Facebook post berating oh. the Duterte administration about, you know, wheeling and dealing. But anyway, I won't go into that. But they, e they sent us an email, asked for the MOUs. Within, I think, 24 hours or less, we sent them the MOUs. Mm -hmm. And this is because the Duterte administration shows its importance for transparency through action, not through words. Mm -hmm. We are going to act very quickly to make sure that everything is transparent. Mm -hmm. And we can assure you that all of these projects will go through the most stringent bidding procedures and will mm -hmm. be completely transparent. Are you, before we move on to the next graphics, are you saying, Vince, that it's possible that, I mean, um, these media stories coming out or these angles are in a way politically driven? Could, I, I, I don't want to go into that, okay. Karen. All I can say is, you know, when the Inquirer reporter wrote that article, at the very least, she should have read the MOU. And if she had read the MOUs that, was, that were signed, she would have seen immediately that these contracts have not been awarded to these companies. And these contracts, these memoranda of understanding, are only for studies at no cost to the government. Mm -hmm. So I really, I'm really disappointed at that word bag. Mm -hmm. because. It, it is really bordering on malice for me because you did not read the MOU, you did not take the time to read the basic document of your story, and yet you said that these companies have already said, have already bagged these projects. So it's really very disappointing. Okay. And ang nakakalungkot lang talaga dito, Karen, is um, sana naman para sa mga kasama sa media, huwag naman butas ang hanapin ka agad. Sana naman Tignan naman nila yung mga solusyon na pinapakita at ino-offer ng gobyerno. Huwag naman butas muna. Okay. Before we move to the next graphics, which is more important, have you spoken with the Inquirer? Yes. Okay. Good. Yes, we, we okay. immediately so gave a statement. And okay. clarifying it and, and just telling them that, you know, please, you know, be more responsible. Okay. All right. Now, next. Next of the graphics, let's do this very quickly. You have a national action plan. We want to show that because this will be presented later on. Can we show the National Action Plan graphic? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll run through that. The next graphic. I think it's Clark already. Okay, yeah. so it'll be Clark International Airport. All right. Okay, we have to okay. do this quickly. You have a lot of projects to show. Okay, who so far has an MOU? What company has an MOU with Clark? Is it CRBC or no, CCCC? No, no, no. The, the Clark International Airport... Uh, was not one of the projects where MOUs were signed in China okay. or Japan. But I want to talk about Clark a little bit. Okay. Um, 
traffic is a huge problem for yes. us in Metro Manila. Mm. But if we notice, one of the areas where traffic is heaviest is leading towards the airport. Yes. Is leading towards Naya. Right? And I want to say because Clark is under BCDA. So Clark, am I right? Clark, the entire Clark, uh, formerly Clark Air Base, is under BCDA. Yes. yes. So yes. this is under your watch. No. Clark Airport is actually under DOTR. Okay, so on, it's okay. under the Department of Transportation. However, what's important about Clark is this. With our problem of traffic, cars go along EDSA, most of them go towards the airport. Okay. But what people I think should know is that a lot of the people going to the airport are from areas outside of Metro Manila. Okay. Just to tell you, Clark is in Central Luzon, right? It's in, it's in Angeles. There are about, last year in 2015, there were about 8 million air passengers from North Luzon and Central Luzon. So you're talking about Pangasinan, Pampanga, Bulacan, mm -hmm. etc., etc. 8 million. Guess how many of those air passengers flew out of Clark? 10%. 800,000 wow. only. Okay. All right. What, more than 7 million of the residents there pass had through Ed's <laughs> go to Metro okay. Manila, pass through Ed's <laughs> just to go to the airport. Let's, try, let's, let's be conservative. Okay. Let's be conservative. Two is to one na lang, Karen. So that means 3.5 million cars, additional cars, went along Ed's okay. going to the airport. All right. But if we had okay. a viable airport car, you know that okay. mga can we yeah. show the graphics again and you tell yeah. us the specifics of the airport? What is the target date for this? Who is building this? Is there a bidding already prepared okay. for this? Okay, go on. So, you know, um, maybe we can show the graphic. The, the graphic it's really again, a beautiful, the airport. It's okay. really a beautiful plan. Let's no? do it quickly. Who designed this? This was designed by a, an MOU with the French government. All right. It was Aeroport okay. de Paris, you uh -oh. know, the, the okay. aer airport operator of Charles de Gaulle. This is the time of Duterte already? No, no, no. This, was, this was a long time ago. Okay. This was Pinoy time. Okay. And no. what's amazing is you are keeping it even if it is from the former administration. Of, of course, because it's okay. a beautiful plan. Okay, go on. It's a beautiful plan. But the sad part about it is it did not happen. Uh -oh. It did not happen. I, I think this was presented to NEDA way back in, I don't know, 2013, 2012. Oh. But it did not happen. If this was implemented in the previous administration, we would have had this airport by now. And 3.5 million less cars okay. uh, would not be on edge. Uh -oh. So right. what you want to do is make sure it is implemented but quickly. Because quickly. we have to play catch up. Eh? Uh -oh. Okay, so how, when is this, when is this so going to start? We coordinated with the, with the Department of Transportation. We're doing that right now. Our target is to start building this, building this by middle of next year. Okay. Middle of next year. So by 2019, half of the president's term, we're going to have our first world-class airport in class. Wow, if you it's are beautiful. able to do that, it's that beautiful. is amazing. And uh, is it fair to say the French company has backed the contract? No, not yet. Again, yet. they did a feasibility study. Oh. It's the same as the, oh, the Chinese, Chinese companies. companies. But I'm sure they, they will participate. Oh, oh. But there is no guarantee that they're going to win. Because so when gonna, is the bidding? Um, we're targeting the bidding to be um, first, first quarter, second quarter next year. Okay, all right, next. We're looking at Clark Green City. Clark Green City, can we do that quickly? Clark Green City is near the airport. This is under BCDA. Yes, it's okay. about Clark Green City. Um, and again, you know, the graphic really uh, does uh, it justice. You know? yeah. it, it's a, the concept here is to build a new city proximate to Metro Manila. Why? Because at the end of the day, the long-term solution to our problems in Metro Manila is really to have an alternative okay. to Metro Manila. You know, this is what they did in Malaysia. If you're familiar with Putrajaya, yeah. the Malaysian government, Kuala Lumpur was experiencing the same thing that we're experiencing now. Congestion, density, traffic, everything. So what did they do? They built a new city, Putrajaya, then they practically moved the entire government there okay. and the private sector followed. All right, this is the plan for Clark Green City. So how we're not moving the entire service? government. Yeah. Uh, we're not. Yes, but I think some agencies, like I think uh, Secretary Tugade has already, some, uh, in some cases, um, expressed his interest to move to Clark. Mm -hmm. But we really have to start thinking about uh, solutions that will really address long-term the issues here. So how many hectares are we talking it's about? 9,400 9, hectares. It's is about a third of Metro Manila. Okay, is, is, is this bigger than BCDA? Um, 
Uh, well, you mean Fort Bonifacio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Fort Bonifacio is uh, 200, it's 100, uh, it's about um, 400 hectares in total. Uh, okay. BGC is only 100. Yeah, so this is 9,000. This is huge. This is huge. This is so huge. who is doing this? Is it a local company? Okay. Right now, we are doing the master plan. We are in partnership with the Japanese government. Okay. Here. We are at the stage of master planning this. The, the visuals that you see mm -hmm. is uh, being done by our partner master planners, uh, JOIN, which is the Japanese Overseas Network for Infrastructure and Development. That's great. And AECOM, uh -oh. which is the number one architectural and design firm in the world. Okay, and this is under the Duterte administration. This is a new plan. No, 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 no. This was a plan of BCDA in the past administration. Okay. But it is such a great plan, Karen. Yeah that not only will the Duterte administration continue it, we're going to fast track it. So it seems to me that there were plans from the Aquino administration that you are taking over, but it looks like implementation was the problem in the Aquino administration. In the, on, on the part of Clark Airport, implementation was the yeah. issue. Yeah. Kasi hindi na tuloy. They sat on it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, but Clark Green City, it still really it was really in the in the conceptual and the master planning stage when we okay. over. All right. But we're really fast tracking this right now. Okay. Before we go to a teaser, I wanna move just yet to the BGC to Naia bus rapid transit system. And the reason I want that discussed before the teaser, can we show the graphics? Is this is the com this is the project mentioned that has an MOU with, with CRBC. CRBC. Yes. This is the very controversial China Road and Bridge Corporation, which uh, supposedly is still blacklisted by the World Bank till 2017, but Vince mentioned that actually closed a project with the Aquino administration for the Central Luzon Link Expressway in 2016. All That's right, fine, yeah. so this is how it looks. All you right, know, discuss that. Let me just discuss this for a little bit. Yeah. You know, our problem going to the airport is that it's very unpredictable. It could take you 30 minutes. It could take you three hours. Yeah. Depending on, you know, the time of day, et cetera, or what day it is. Yeah. You know? The key to this project is that if we're able to implement from Fort Bonifacio to the airport, it will take you only 15 minutes guaranteed. Really? Guaranteed. Okay. Just like how it is in developed countries. There's yeah. a, you know, like when you go to a bus stop, there's a timetable, the bus arrives. Yeah at this time and then it gets to the airport yeah, yeah. at this time and then so you know that's why this is such a wonderful project yeah. for the people okay no that's why nakakalungkot Karen eh na ako nagungkot ako personally kasi ito pa yung binato kasi napakaganda nitong proyektong to ang laki ng binipisyo para sa tao now if we're able to implement this, mm -hmm. and this, by the way, is in mm -hmm. conjunction with the overall plan, mm -hmm. uh, overall BRT plan of the government. Mm -hmm. you know, it is part and parcel of that. It's just that BGC and NAIA 3 cross along BCDA properties. That's okay. why it's easy for us to implement. We can build this tomorrow if you wanted to, because it's, there's no right-of-way oh. problems. Okay. There's no issues. We can yeah. just build it right away. Okay. Now, CRBC will be doing a feasibility study first. How long will they do that? Will it be Typically, a feasibility study takes six months. But so hopefully, but we, can, we can push uh, them to do it quicker. Yeah, because this is one project, I think. I mean, these are big expectations. So this is one project you want done before President Duterte's term ends. And, you know, I think that is the principle behind uh -oh. Uh -oh. the infrastructure projects mm -hmm. of, the, of the Duterte government. Okay. And Secretary Tugade and Secretary Villar, they've said this numerous times, that we are going to start projects that we can finish within the president's term. Mm -hmm. That's why we are really doing our best to really fast track these projects because really our people cannot wait, Karen. Okay. The, the, the difficulties yeah. of traffic, of congestion, you know, for us, Sometimes we take them for granted, but for people who work every day, going through traffic every day, it's really terrible. Okay. No, so we have to act quickly. All right. We have to provide the solutions that will address them quickly. All right. We're going to take a quick break, but before we do, we're going to discuss more projects, show you graphics in detail. There's a question for you from Vic Agustin. He said, your predecessor, in a rare public admission, lamented the fact that BCDA failed to provide affordable housing in the fort. Arnel Casanova even admitted that he can't afford to buy a condo at the fort. 
What is the new BCDA management position on the issue in light of President Duterte's socialistic and inclusive orientation? I agree 100% with the observation of Mr. Vic Agustin. You know, it's very insightful. And it's really sad you know, that, you know, a call center worker, yeah. you know, which probably comprises, what, 60% of the workforce in uh, BGC, cannot afford to live in BGC. Mm -hmm. They have to live either far away mm -hmm. or live in the periphery of mm -hmm. BGC. And I agree 100%, and this has to be addressed. And we are going to push for affordable housing yeah. in BGC for people who cannot afford Surendra yeah. or okay. Pacific Place, yeah. because that's really important. And I think that is at the cornerstone of the Duterte administration, equity. Okay. We, have to, we have to make the life in this country more equitable, not just, you know, especially for those who cannot afford it too much. We have to make, we have to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor. It's as simple as that. And I think there is no other president except President Duterte that can do this. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll continue our conversation with BCBA President this season. This is his first live interview on TV. It's an exclusive. Stay with us. We'll be discussing after Subi Clark Cargo, the portal investments, portal projects, and more to come. So stay with us, Hot Copy. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Head Start. Still with us on Hot Copy. This is an exclusive. It is his first live TV interview. Vince Dison is with us. He's the newly appointed president of the Basis Conversion Development Authority, or BCDA. And we've been discussing the MOUs uh, coming from the state visit of President Duterte to China. We've discussed the Clark International Airport, a project coming up. Clark Green City, the BGC Tunaia Bus Rapid Transit System, and now we are moving to the Subic Clark Cargo System. All right, I want to understand this. This is the railway project. This is going to be big if it, if, if it pushes through. We have that on graphics. Go ahead. You know, the Subic Clark Railway Project was actually a dream of Secretary Art Tugade. Uh, he mentioned this to us even before uh, the Duterte administration When he was over. BCBA head. When he was Another head of Clark, Clark Development Clark Corporation. Head. Now, what is important about this is yeah. that in Subic, you have a seaport. Yeah. It's, it's one of the best seaports in the country. Okay. You know, built by the Americans. Uh -huh. you know, it's Subic Naval Base. Mm -hmm. you know? And then in Clark, you have one of probably the best runways in the country in Clark International Airport. Built by the Americans. Also built by the Americans. No, and we really give, we give them credit uh -huh. for that. They are strategic and very well built um, facilities. Yeah. But what is important is to provide the connectivity, the connection between the seaport and the airport. Yeah. Why? Because we need this for movement of goods. True. Hindi ba? Alam mo, ang problema natin sa sa Pier sa Metro Manila, di ba? Sobrang congested, di ba? Ang daming mga trucks sa kalye, di ba? You, I mean, you, you pass through Ross yeah, Boulevard. Yeah, yeah. So what we need to do is we really need to develop other ports. But for other ports will not be viable or will not develop quickly enough if there is no connection, if there's no interconnectivity. Yeah. Okay, no? I actually know this road. Every time yes, we go to uh, yeah, every time we go to Anvaya yes, or Subic, exactly. that is the road. This is where the mountains have been carved Absolutely. off, and it's actually a perfectly straight, lined, well, cement, more or less. I mean, well done. It's one of the best highways in the country. I put it that way. All right. And so by the way, sorry, I, I, I don't want to brag, but but this was done during um, Secretary Singson's time no? when he was president of BCDA. Oh. SE Tech, Subic Clark Tarlac Expressway was built by BCDA through a JICA grant by the Japanese government. So, so no, it was built in 2005, I think, and this completed was, in 2008. So this was uh, GMA's time. Yes, yes, this was GMA's time. Okay. So right. and then, and then also continued by uh, sorry, also continued by General Abaya. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I, w I was just uh, informed about that. Okay. But, but the point here is that now that you have a road there and it's a beautiful road. Yeah. The next phase is to build a train. Okay, on the side. On the side. Okay, brilliant idea. Now, what's this part of the MOU in China? Yes. Okay, which yes. company was that? This was signed, the feasibility study. Again, the yeah. feasibility study was signed with 
China Harbor Engineering. Okay. No, the just to give you a background of China Harbor Engineering, they're the ones that are right now constructing the 57 kilometer long bridge from Hong Kong to Macau. I think it is the biggest and boldest infrastructure project in the world to date. 57 kilometers, yeah. Karen. I yeah. mean, I can't even yeah. imagine it. You won't have to take a ferry anymore. You know, you yeah. can drive to Macau. You can drive Macau. to Macau. You know what our longest bridge in the Philippines is? It's San Juanico. You know how long yeah. it is? Nine. Two kilometers. A two? Okay. Nag nine pang so, you know, these, these companies, uh -oh. and they, they, they also built part of the fast train from Beijing to Shanghai. Okay. But is China Harbor, is this company the same one that dredged? Um, the Scarborough Shoal. I mean, there's one that uh, uh, Congressman Harry Roque mentioned. He was warning the Duterte government of one uh, Chinese company that actually was dredging and helped build the reclaimed islands in the disputed waters. I'm not, I'm not aware okay. Okay. at all about that. Um, I don't think it is. Okay. I don't think it is. But again, we go back. We go back to the point. What was signed in China were were MOUs to do a feasibility study. The contract has not been awarded mm -hmm. to these companies yet. So, para sa akin naman, and you know, with all due respect you know, to, to everyone concerned, sana bago tayo maghanap ng butas, mag-focus muna tayo sa solusyon. Kasi kailangan natin to eh. This project is not only going to help alleviate the number, of, the, reduce the number of trucks mm -hmm. plying the roads of Metro Manila, because now, Instead of going to, to Manila, they can go to Subic, the cargo, and as you see in the, gra in the graphic, the cargo um, containers go on the train and go straight to Clark. So no more tr big trucks on the roads. Yeah, yeah. No? And, but second, it also, connectivity also provides a means for less costly and faster transport of goods. Okay. What does that mean? It means goods will be cheaper mm -hmm. for our people. Mm -hmm. But don't we want that? No, definitely, yeah. I think. Now, if, if, let's say, the feasibility finishes and then bidding is uh, on schedule, we're talking about, are we talking about this railway project, don't get me wrong, finishing within six years? Because people are asking, yung, yung, yung additional coaches na ng MRT, ilan taon na namin hinihintay, alam mo yun? Ito pa, it's a railway project. Karen, sa ibang gobyerno yun, tingin ko dapat ibahin niyo si President Duterte. When President Duterte says, we will do it, we will do it. And our timetable for this is we were estimating that we can finish the Subiclar Cargo Railway uh, by the end of 2019 or early mm. 2020. Okay, and would you be in charge of this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Would that in be coordination considered? with Subic, of yeah. course. Yeah. No. Oh. Because uh, BCBA is the owner of the, of the Subiclar Tarlac Expressway. And so... This can be, actually, this train project, we could start this tomorrow if we could. Because there is no right-of-way problem. Yeah. Tuli -tuli I, I was going to say, Tuli -tuli this is something that can be done immediately. 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 Yeah, yeah. Secretary Tugade was preaching this when he was uh, with Clark in the past administration. Nobody listened to him. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sad to say. Now, uh, but now, mm. he's in charge of the OTR. So, with his help, we're going to make this happen. Okay. So clearly with your presentation today, and um, you will be presenting this uh, far more in detail in Malacanang later at yes. a press conference. Clearly what you're saying, are you saying that the angle of the media that all these companies are blacklisted was overblown? Was it Absolutely overblown? overblown. Was it? Absolutely overblown. But this is, I think, and this is what Pre President Duterte has really been asking of the media, and I think it's just fair. All we ask for is, you know, some, some responsibility. For this. The problem with the media, if it's already in the Inquirer, if it's already on ABS-CBN, if it's already on GMA, people take it as fact already. When the Inquirer says, these contracts who were barred by the World Bank have bad contracts, people will take that as fact already. It's so hard to refute that because the media is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So I think all we want is the exercise of some responsibility and I think it's not too much to ask for. Mm. So, I, I, the, the, the word bag has been corrected. I think so. I mean, well, hopefully it has. I haven't, I, I think so. uh, I haven't I mean, read the Inquirer since, so no. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I, I read the Inquirer every day. I mean, honestly. But, okay, moving forward, moving forward, 
Okay, portal, let, let's move to the investments, the portal investments. Okay. You, this is the last three mi minutes of the show. You're going to be showing exactly what to expect in terms of the investment graph. Can we show that? Uh, can you move there? This is it. This is the last graphics sure. that we'll have for the day. Before I go into the details of this, I just want to say... You have three minutes. Yeah, uh, I just want to say, action speaks louder than words. Freedom of information is so important for our government and so important for our country and our people. They need to know what the government is doing. That is the best way to stop corruption. And the Duterte administration, and you know, I would like, you know, we, we all have to commend Secretary Martin and Danar and Executive Secretary Bingbong Mijaldea for this. Within one month, the president signed Executive Order Number Two, the Freedom of Information Executive Order. And this is the basis for that. No, it's called the uh, Freedom of Information Portal. So basically what it does is anyone, any citizen, media, non-media, whoever, can go to this portal and see all the government projects. We're going to launch this within the year. And you can see, for example, in this graph, you can see what projects are ongoing, what are the rail projects, what are the road projects, the bridge projects, airport projects. And then it also shows you what is the status of this project? And about 25%, about 10%, 1%, 50%. And it also shows you indicators such as Makano nang may invest dito yeah. okay. for investors. No? Oh. And it also tells you how many jobs have been created or in. Yeah. Actually, Today, what no. you're saying is the public with this portal can actually see how fast the project is going. Yes. And will it finish? Is it, is slow? it on time? Is, is it, it slow? on time? Okay. So they can just transparency and accountability. They yeah. can make uh, they can hold the government officials accountable. Okay. If they're too slow, hey, yun, but ang bagal bagal mo naman dyan. Uh -oh. Immediately magagaman niya yun. Okay. Now, Ngayon, please, yeah. ang importante pa dito, and maybe we could go to the, to the, to the last one, to the okay. last slide. You see here, these are just examples, no? Clark Green City, Makati BRT, etc. No? Diyan, may project status, etc. No? So, if, Ngayon, this, this, if free, you, this freedom of information portal no. is not yet up. No, it's not yet up. Okay. We're, we're building it right now. Okay. Remember, Karen, the like Duterte this. administration has been over 100 days pa lang, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over 100 days pa lang, <laughs> But we're already trying to do things as quickly as possible. Okay. No? But what this can do is, transparency naman to. You click on a project, and then you can see everything about the project. The MOUs that were signed. No, anyone, no? So now the inquirer, there's no excuse for media you anymore. You have to let go sorry. of the inquirer. Anyway, okay. so now, any report, sorry, okay, any reporter any like reporter. you, like yourself, <laughs> can go to that website, click on it, and then pop comes out the MOU. You can okay. read it. No? Okay. <laughs> and, and also all of the documents from step one, remember we discussed the steps, from step one to the end of the project, you can monitor it in real time. Mm. No, as it happens. Okay. So I think this is very important. All and, right. And, now, and um, President Duterte is the only one that's really made this happen. Okay. All right. We have a few minutes left, but clearly uh, Vince's first guesting on the show, I'd have to say, was quite informative with a lot of, of, of plans that's come up for the first time on television. I'll be honest with you. You are, you've been newly appointed as, as BCDA president. This is ambitious. I mean, you can succeed or fail. You could be remembered as the guy, if you know what? That guy, Vince Bison, he wanted to do all these things, went on TV and left office with nothing. nothing. That, that can happen. Or Vince Bison was able to do it all under Duterte's term as BCDAN. I mean, you must be so pressured. Absolutely. Ab absolutely. But I, I feel I mean, the pressure. What, you know, when, 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 the, the, when the president ran for office, and I, I just want to, I, th I think this is really important. I think he ran and won because of three things. Number one, because he echoed the voice of the people. Okay. They're disgust at the hardships they go through every day. They're disgust at inaction in government. But more importantly, he, all, he won because he offered bold solutions, matapang na solution, mm -hmm. and he promised swift action, which he already showed in Davao. And I think those are the three things why President Duterte won. And I think that is the challenge for all of us who have been you know, given the responsibility under his administration. Mm -hmm. We have to be bold and we have to be swift, we have to be fast. Okay. No? And that's why, you're right, these are ambitious projects, but mm -hmm. we need them, Karen. Mm -hmm. The only solution to the problems of our people, the 
the hardships they face every day mm. are these bold solutions. Kung hindi natin magawa to, kawawa ang Pilipino. Tuloy-tuloy ang hirap. Okay. Before we close, I just wanted to ask you also, just to make things fair, you've mentioned the media so many times. But in a way, uh, hasn't the media also, in the first 100 days, given President Duterte, number one, the support it had asked for in the first 100 days? And isn't the media's role, to be honest, is to be a watchdog? I mean, this is also what I, want, I wanted to, to, to tell you, is, isn't the communications of Malacanang itself challenged? I mean, a lot of the problems coming out right now are from the communications of Malacanya. The president says one thing, and it turns out cabinet secretaries will end up saying another. Is it really, I mean, honestly, Vince, is it really all the media's fault? Because I want to be fair about it, that I don't honestly think so. Okay, let me answer quickly your, your two, you asked me two yes. questions. Is uh, the media being fair to the president? And... Uh, shouldn't media be the watchdog? For the first question, my answer to you, sad to say, is no. The media has not been fair to the president. One example, the MOUs in China. So that's not media as a whole. That was one report that yeah. came out. Yeah. Okay, fine. But, you know, there have been so many instances where the media has been so unfair with the president be simply because the media refuses to really understand where the president is coming from. For example, no, for example, yung kanyang... But would you want a media that just says... No, no, no. I'm not saying that. That's why that's my second point. Okay. Should the media be the watchdog? Absolutely. You know, the media's responsibility is to safeguard against abuse, is to make this to check against um, things that are being incorrectly fed to the to the public to check in for validity of information i absolutely agree but the media has to also practice not only responsibility but also circumspection they have to be circumspect they have for example no yung pagmumura ni presidente yung pagmumura ni presidente diba media even during the campaign paulit ulit bakit ganyan ang bibig ni presidente bakit yan but what media refuses to understand is that the where those those expletives are coming from they are coming from not from the president they are coming from the daily struggles of our people that the president is just voicing out Karen, but the kung ikaw pumipiga ka sa MRT, yes, araw, yeah, araw, but dalawang Vince, oras, this is hindi ka pa mapapamura. Oh. No, but, but that's my point. Yeah, okay. you, we have to, the media has to practice circumspection in the sense that they have to understand where the president is coming, where his anger is coming from, where his, his passion is coming from. For me, it's not an expletive, it's an expression of his passion to help our people and to solve the problems of our people. Now. But you another, another, sorry, okay. another. But we, we're not going to get into the cursing discussion. Uh, this absolutely. is going to be a show. Absolutely. Okay, but, but just to, to wrap it up, there's the next show. Sure. Okay, keep it quick. So, another example. For example, when he came from, from China, you know, he was, uh, um, they were, uh, they, he brought on billions of dollars of investment. Then a reporter talked about chewing gum. Come on, carry it. I mean, what, what, you, that's, that's <laughs> what, what we're saying. Okay. No, so, ano naman, let's meet halfway here. So, the, essentially, the, the, what you're saying is you want the media to try and focus more on the good things that this administration is doing. We're That's asking, your message. We're asking the media to be fair, to be more circumspect, to look at the bigger picture, not look at chewing gum or, you know, the words, some words that come out of the president's But don't words matter? Words matter, definitely. Words matter, but those words have to be taken in their proper context and perspective. Okay, all right. We have to end there only because it's 9 in the morning. <laughs> the next show is up. And also because I wanted to stress the theme of today's interview is really to get in, uh, uh, to, to be detailed about the projects. Uh, we've discussed specifically the first time on television with graphics. You're seeing the projects that will be discussed in a press conference in Malacanang later on today. So we'll discuss the BCDA thank at you. another time. More info. Thank you. Thank Vince you, Bison, thank you for coming to the thank show. You so much, I know this is thank your you for first the time. Thank you so much. That's Get Start Today. Re